So good morning and uh, thank you for joining us today in this informative session of the WIT program. Uh, as I said before, uh, this session is going to be recorded and will be uploaded at the uh, website of a uh, WIT program. The session will last about 40 minutes and hopefully uh, we, don't, we will not have any technical problems, but if it would, uh, we will connect again. Firstly, we are going to introduce ourselves. Uh, I am Ainoa Nieva, and he is Carlos Martirela, and we are the WIT programs managers. In this session, we would like to help you with all the questions that you can have about this first call and about the application system. The structure, the structure of this meeting will be like this. A small introduction about WIT. After, we will have a, a look to the most frequently asked questions that we have already got by email from Son of View. Later, my workmate, Carlos, will do an application form and he will clarify some of the mistakes we have already detected in the application that we have received. And finally, you will have time to ask questions through the chat. Through the chat. Uh, you can ask in English or in Spanish if you want. As you know, which is an H2020 program for every state, state researchers, co-founded by the European Union, Union and the government of Navarre, Spain which will have two goals. The first one that we are running now, it started the, the 8th of June, and uh, it will finish the 8th, uh, sorry, it started the 8th of April, and it will end the 8th of June. And it will have eight fellowships. And the second call, uh, we expect it uh, to be launched at the beginning of 2023. And there will be also another eight fellowships. The fellows who finally come to Navarre will find a 36 month contract that will enable them to do the project of PhD, the doctoral program and the thesis in one of the two universities of Navarre, the Public University of Navarre, UNA, and the University of Navarre, UNA. Both universities are located in Pamplona, the capital city of Navarre, and both of them have a large experience in talent attraction and retention. Besides, almost 30 academic and industrial partners organizations of WIF will offer secondment, short stays, and training focuses on the WIF areas. These partners organizations will also contribute to the program with external mentors to provide an industrial point of view to the early stage researchers' projects. As you already know, the WIC program, program has four areas, health, energy, mechatronics, and artificial intelligence applied to the previous ones. As we will say later, each area has different line, lines of research in which 49 excellent research groups from both universities takes part. All candidates are free to choose one of them for developing his or her PhD project. And let's have a look now to the most frequently asked questions. I'm going to share the screen, so all of them all of you can see it. So let's have a look. So the first one we have already answered it. There will be in this first call, eight fellowships. Is there an age limit to apply for the positions? No, only the years of research experience will be considered 
not the physical age of the candidate. Can I apply for a position if I am in my final year of studies in a country outside the European higher education area? Yes, if you are studying in a university not adapted to the European higher education area, you must have completed a degree that gives access to doctoral studies by 8th of June 2022, provided that you are eligible for a doctoral program in the country where your university is located. I already have a doctoral degree. Can I apply for the fellowship for a second doctoral degree? No. This call is for every STEM researcher who are between the first and the fourth years of their research career and have not been awarded a doctoral degree. Sorry, somebody is waiting for the... No. Um, I'm currently enrolled in a doctoral program, but I have not defended my PhD thesis yet. Can I apply? Yes, provided that you have not been awarded a doctoral degree yet, and you have not defended your thesis by the closing date of for application. This is for, uh, by the 8th of June. Uh, note that with fellows will be enrolled in UGNA and UNAF doctoral programs. I would like to apply, but I will only have my diploma master at the end of June 2022. Can I apply by sending the bachelor's diploma and the certificate of achievement of the first year, year of master? Unfortunately, you will not be able to attend this first call since all the requirements must be fulfilled and accredited before the deadline of the call. This is the 8th of June. However, if you obtain your master's degree at the end of 2022, you will be able to access the second call of the program, which is expected to be launched in January 2023. I have completed my master last month. Does that qualify me as an ESR? Or do I have to be enrolled for a doctorate degree first? Yes, you are an ESR, and it's not necessary to be enrolled in a doctoral program. Therefore, in case of obtaining the WITS fellowship, you will have to enroll in the doctoral program of the Navarre University of your choice. I have chosen a specific research group. Can I freely choose any doctoral program from the provided list? No, when the research group is chosen, the informatic document of that research group indicates the doctoral, doctoral program that must be carried out although in some cases there is more than one option. This is a very important question that later my workmate Carlos uh, will, will uh, speak a little bit more longer about this. Be careful not to indicate a doctoral program other than those indicated, and moreover, don't indicate a program from an university different from that of the chosen research group. This is the example, but we will come back about this question later, okay? What proof of exception document of English language matter provide if I completed my master's degree from a university in the UK where the language of instruction was English? In this case, the exception document will be the master's degree or academic record in which it can be seen that it corresponds to a UK university. And now the last ones, uh, they are about the application systems. Can I say my CV free format? No, you must use the template designed for this purpose, which can be found at the GWIT website. Can I say my expression of interest in free format? Again, no. You must use the template designed for this purpose. And that is also in the website. Can I send the documents all or part of it by postal mail or by email? No, documents can only be submitted electronically through the website and in PDF format. 
And the last one, is it possible to submit documents after the call deadline? The provisional list of applications that have been admitted, excluded, and in need of rectification, indicating the reasons for re rejection or rectification, will be published in the WIT website. The applicants will have a period of seven calendar days to submit their amended applications through the website. Application that fail to provide proof of achievements indicated in the CV cannot, cannot be rectified. So now, Carlos, my workmate, will go on with another general considerations and he will do an application for Good morning, everybody. I am Carlos Martirena, program manager of the WIT program. And as my colleague I know, said previously, we want to use this informative session to try to clarify some questions of the call that seem not to be too clear in light of the first proposals received. To try not to forget any of these issues, later I will try to create a proposal step by step and clarifying point by point the different issues that may arise. But uh, before that, I would like to give you some general advice that I consider important to take into account before starting to fill in the application template. The first advice is purely technical. It is necessary to take into account that unfortunately, our application does not save the data enterer. So it is necessary to completely fill the application form and attach all the documents before sending it. It cannot be left without sending a single document thinking that you will be able to attack it later. It would be necessary in that case to make a total new proposal and enter all the data again. So it would be very convenient that before starting to fill your application, read very carefully the guide of applicants and prepare in your computer a folder with all the documents you will need later. The second tip is more important. As uh, I know I said before, you must bear in mind that if you are selected as a WIT fellow, you will not only have to carry out a specific investigation, a doctoral thesis, but you will also have to take a doctoral program. As a WIT program is designed, both things are related. They are not independent. That is why my advice is that before starting to fill in the template, take the necessary time to properly choose, first of all, the subline or research group in which you would like to carry out your research. And once this group is chosen, look in the corresponding file for that research group the program, the doctoral program that you will have to take for it. We have detected in many cases that the chosen doctoral program is not the established one in the chosen research subline. And even in some cases, that even the choose doctoral program is from a different university than that of the chosen research group. Regarding the choice of uh, sublime or research group, there is one more thing that I would like to highlight. As you know, WIT has four areas, or rather, three specific areas with a four area 
the artificial intelligence transversal to all of them. So, if you are, if your area is the advanced manufacturer, the health, or even the energy, before choosing a certain research group in that area, also check that there isn't a group in the artificial intelligence area that you might even fit better. So, after this uh, previous consideration, we are trying to start to make an application form. Uh, we accept to that uh, application form and in first place uh, we find some fields that are purely identificative uh, fields. You have to put your name, your surname, birthday, gender, nationality, passport number. It is not uh, purely necessary. County of residence, city, contact email, country code, telephone number. Uh, all of this data are just identificative data and other are just statistical data that you that we need to report to the European Union where uh, the gender balance, the country balance of the proposals was say. After that, you, you will have to fill some fields about uh, personal circumstances, like uh, if you have family obligations, if you have any kind of disability, these things will be used later. For instance, the family obligations to, to fix the amount of your fellowships. If you have family obligations, is an, an additional amount in your fellowships. And if you have any kind of disability, it, will, it should be taken in account in the hour of scoring your curriculum meeting. Uh, and after that, you find two very important fields because they are related to the fulfillment of requirements of this call. The first of, of them is the mobility rule. You have to answer to these questions. Have you lived, worked, or studied in Spain in the last three years? And for how many months? But uh, it's not just answering that questions. You also need to attack the documents, the proven documents of that circumstances. So you will say, have you lived in Spain? Yes. Uh, for how many months? Five. But we, you will have to attack this document the document with the acronym MR, Mobility Rule, adding a proven document, for instance, in general, all the pages from your passport in which this requirement is proven. The same thing will occur 
with the condition of being an early stage researcher. Being an early stage researcher means that you are in the four first years of your research career. And when it's considered the starting point of that research career? Well, in general, the starting point of your research career is considered the date when you obtained your master degree. So that's the reason of the question made in the application form. Did you complete your studies that allowed the access to the doctorate after the 8th April of 2018? If you say yes, okay. That date will be compared with the master degree title that you should attack and you fulfill the requirement. If you say no, so you finish, you obtain your master degree more than four years ago, you will have to argue the exception for this rule, that is that you have taken some career break during this period. So here in this field, you will have to describe uh, from, I, I obtained my master degree in 2010. But after that, I have been in the military service for, for five years, or I've been working in, a, in an industrial enterprise. And as I said, in the, the same as I said for the mobility rule, you will have to attack the proven document of that circumstances. In this case, you have two ways to prove it. The most uh, convenient way would be reflect in your curriculum vitae those facts, those periods where you have been working in other areas or any other thing, and add in the in this document, the document of the merits indicated in the curriculum vitae, these circumstances, for instance, the contract from that enterprise. The other way would be attacking in this document the personal circumstances, in particular circumstances, noticing this whole current place that you have taken. Uh, after that, uh, there are a, another um, field with uh, about uh, personal circumstances that are if you have the condition of brevity. And now we enter in the second part of the application form, that they are the education data. We will have to, to put your bachelor's degree to the university where you obtain it, the start date and the graduating date. And the same thing about your master degree. The university, the start date, and the graduation date. As I, as I said before, the most important date would be the graduation date of the master degree, because it's the point when we start to count the period of research experience. Uh, to the question of English language proficiency, you will have to check which is your English certificate or which, or if you are making use of the exemption. In any case, as I told you, after answering that question, you will have to attack the proven document. The English certificate or the exception document that can be two kinds of documents. One, if the exception is for being natural of an English language country, you will have to attack an identification card or 
your password number or your nationality card. And if you have taken a master or study, a bachelor or master degree in one of those countries, you will have to attack the proven document. And we will, after filling this part of the application form, we enter in the doctoral program part of the call. And here I am going to insist in some things that already pointed by my colleague Ainoa, because we have found many mistakes in this point in the received proposals. Um, my advice is that before filling this part, you will be very sure of your um, research group chosen. And if possible, with this file in front of you, you have chosen this research group that in the web is the 2F3 research group. And notice that in this information field, you can see that the doctoral program that you should follow is the doctoral in health science. And that this doctoral program belongs to the public university of Navarre. So be sure of that because the order in which the data are asked is a little bit different. The first thing that you have to complete in the application form is the university. So you will choose the public university of Navarra, you will choose the doctoral in health science, you will choose the health area, and finally, the group, the selected group. For instance, uh, after that, you have to attack the data from the person who sends the reference letter. You will fill the, the, the name of the teacher or researcher and the, the university or research center that he belongs to. And as always, attack the proven document. The research le recommendation letter one and recommendation letter two. And uh, that would be beyond the last of the fields required. After that, you have to add the attached documents. Mm, if you have, have done the fulfillment of the form, as I told you, most of them would be already attached. But there are some documents that you must attack now. There are the academic records, the curriculum vitae, and the expression of interest. These are three very important documents to make a proper scoring of your proposal. And two of them, the curriculum vitae and the expression of interest, have a template that has been followed 
to attack document. But as I told you, the first document would be the academic record that you must join with the title and attack as an only document. Okay. The academic records of the bachelor's degree and the academic records of your master's degree in case. About the curriculum vitae and in order, in general, all the documents uh, need to use some uh, coding that is established in the in the code. It's just for avoid problems with the management of the documentation. For instance, the curriculum vitae of uh, an applicant called the John Smith should be the CD Smith.pdf, extension of PDF. It's very important that uh, as you attack your curriculum vitae and your expression of interest, you will follow the format and contents market in the template. Because if you don't do it, your scoring might be affected. It's not just a format question. For instance, in the expression of interest in the template, we mark the questions that you have to present in this expression of key interest. If you don't follow these recommendations, probably you will get a not very good score. And uh, that would be all the advices I would like to give you in order to fulfill the, your application in this first phase. Uh, just for giving you some guidelines about the, how would be the process in the next phases, uh, you can consider that uh, after June the 8th, where the, that is the death of the call, there is one month of the admission or rejection phase. We will uh, receive your proposal and we uh, accurate if you fulfill or not the requirements. And if you don't, in some cases, then we would be given a seven days period to uh, correct those deficiencies observed. And it's expected that uh, in a month, the final list of proposals admitted will be published in the web, the program. And after that, it will begin the scoring first phase of your proposals. And it's uh, this phase, is uh, it will take about one month or one and a half month. So in the for the, the end of August, there will be published the list of the 40 proposals that accept to the second phase of the call. 40 proposals as maximum, 10 for each one of the four areas. And those proposals that get to the second phase will have to add in the month of September the documentation of the of your research proposal. 
then there will be the period of evaluation of your of the second phase of the call. It's expected to be completed in a two-month period. So by the end of uh, November, that will, will be published the list with the eight proposals that are selected and another eight proposals that complete a reserve list. And all those proposals, the 16 proposals, will accept to the interview phase. That interview phase does not involve additional scoring. It's just a phase to, to comprobate the fulfillments of the requirements. And that there is not any incoherence between the data you give on your application and the reality. So it's not expected that any change occur in the eight uh, proposals selected. But in case of something that occur, it would be taken one of the proposals of the research of the research list. And uh, those interviews will take part approximately in the first week of December. And after that, at the end of December, it will be published the final resolution with the results. The fellowships will be selected and you will have a period of three months to complement all the administrative and bureaucratic things needed to come to Spain and began to the fellowships with the con firm the contracts and start the fellowships. So uh, if you have uh, some questions about what I have told or any other circumstances about the call and the program, you can make it uh, through the chat. We'll try to, to answer them. So the first question that we have is, good morning, thank you to organize this meeting. I have a question. For medicine, pharmacy, or pharmaceutical chemistry students, we don't have to take a bachelor's degree because there is a single single master's degree about five, six years. How do they feel the bachelor's degree feel? Thank you. How could they feel the field? <laughs> So, um, no, yes. Yeah, no. Um, in the application form, it's called bachelor, but uh, as a as a easy way of identifying uh, internationally the a grade different but master. You, if you have uh, uh, a medicine degree, at, at the effect of this call, you have to fulfill the dates as a bachelor degree. But as I, as I told you in the presentation, these studies should uh, have, they are equivalent, in this case, to a master degree. So, it's not exactly necessary in this case to have course the master degree to be able to apply to this score. In this case, the grade of medicine, the grade of pharmacy 
you see in Spain and maybe in other countries, there is some other cases that should be proven. Uh, will enable you to ask to participate in this poll. And as uh, in this case, the starting date for counting your earlier stage researcher experience uh, could commence to count in the date when you get your medicine degree. So another one, could the English certificate requirement be substituted by an interview soon, et cetera, with the candidates? In such an interview, the English proficiency level of the candidate can be fully established. Okay, we fully understand this question, uh, but in the call, uh, the English uh, certification is a requirement, as you say. So because of that, because if a, a requirement, there is uh, no way to, even if that people is able to communicate in English, he or she must certificate that level. Uh, as Carlos has said before, uh, by two ways, with an, a certificate of uh, um, Cambridge University, ITLs, or the other ones that we have in the call, or if they are a native, if it's a native native person from a language, an English language country, that that person will be. Uh, is uh, we have the exception, but in both cases, uh, that English level must be certified. Is what is a requirement in the call, and, and it must be fulfilled. So another one. Can I edit my application? I have already submitted my details. Now I would like to edit my application. Okay. And uh, no, the as Carlos said before, once you have a uh, Send it, uh, send it out, it's <laughs> already done. Uh, and there's no way to make changes because the application system, uh, it doesn't permit that. Uh, so but you can do another one and we will take the one that is okay. If now you have, I suppose that most of you now, uh, you have realized that uh, your applications are not okay. <laughs> So you can do it again. Uh, you can do it again in the in, in this day, so before the 8th of June. So the new application, if the application arrives before the 8th of June, uh, it will be okay. Regarding your research proposal content, content of the expression of interest, interest, should I specifically develop a research proposal according to my chosen group of research, for example? suggesting specific aims and experimental models, or should I generally indicate my research goals in that group? I assume I should align the group's interests with mine. Mm. <laughs> what a difficult question. In this first phase, uh, the expression of interest is a, a general as a general consideration. His, uh, his station is only two pages. And uh, I think it's not uh, the moment that to make uh, such decisions. In any case, that would be taken in account and are more accurate to do it, to do them in the second phase. In case you accept to the second phase of the call, when you have to present the research proposal, but it's a more extent, it is expected that in that second phase, you should contact in any way with your research group selected. And you can discuss with, with the, the IP or, or the researcher for these groups those circumstances. So the next one is the is like the one before. Since some of us have been submitted our application already, uh, can I do it again? Yes, of course. And you have all the, the templates. Uh, we ask you please uh, to read carefully the guide for applicants. 
It's a document that you can find it on the website and it's very useful, okay? It's very useful, it's an easy language and you have all the keys in order to have a, a good application, an application that would fit with all the requirements. So please read it and then you can, of course, in the website, you have the CV templates and the expression of interest templates. And of course, you can do it again before the deadline of the first call. Can I submit an English certificate to, with an expired date? Well, it's from January, 22 January. Yes, uh, there is no there is no date for the uh, for the certification, so it's it's valid. What type of documents I need to upload as an evidence of current break case? Is it a letter of some official document from some organization due to which I could not start a PhD after I have done my master's before 2018? Um. As I told in, in the presentation, uh, there can be many cases. And uh, the normal things are that uh, you left your research career and uh, began working in an industrial area or any other circumstances. So probably these circumstances would be explained in the application form in the first place. Probably in the curriculum vitae, that can be uh, noticed as other experience, professional experience, and so those data. In that case, you should to prove support your uh, contract, working contract of that uh, enterprise or equivalent uh, circumstances must, uh, could be very different. Uh, some person can, I don't know, can be ill during from two years. So it should be uh, described in the personal circumstances document, uh, and including any proven document of that circumstance. Good morning. So, is it mandatory to have completed the master's degree to apply, or can I apply having the bachelor's degree plus 60 ECTS from the master? Uh, in the general case, you have you need the master title. But uh, it's certain that, uh, for instance, in the Spanish normative, you could join a doctoral program with, without a master, but with a bachelor degree and having pursued, have, having completed 300 European credits with at least 60 of master level. So, with the, it uh, should be taken in account very carefully, but maybe with uh, the circumstances you reflect in your question, you could be accepted. It's possible, not the general rule, but it can be one of the extension, extensions needed. Okay, thank you for your time. When did you give the result? Uh, okay, the result for this first phase, as my colleague said before, uh, it could be at the end of August. So, and one uh, one point. I want to say that the, the results of the 
first phase evaluation are not added to the results that you will get in the second phase. The results of the first phase are just for the preselection, for uh, make you go to the second phase. But all the persons who accept to the second phase will start from zero. The final evaluation would be only the one of the second phase. Uh, okay, thank you. Both fields are mandatory great start. So do I feel both fields with the same degree? Yes, there is no problem. We, we put the, the great start in order to assume that all the fields uh, will be full and okay. Um, so you can repeat the same degree and that's okay. If approved, can I change the research group at the time of signing the contract? And uh, no, no. You have to stay in the same research group that you have uh, chosen uh, now in your application. I think if you read carefully the not only the the guide of applicants but the official documents of the call that it's also available in the web, you will notice there is there is one point that uh, research group chosen. An area can be modified after the, the publication of the final list of approved proposals, of admitted proposals. It's because uh, the reason is because uh, in the scoring of the second phase, but uh, in the scoring of your proposal is going to be considered the fit between the research group chosen and your your abilities so it would be not possible to have a scoring for being to certain research group and after that after having the fellowship uh, go to uh, firm the contract with, uh, with another to go to another research group and related to, to this, we, uh, I have to say that we have received, uh, you can only do one application for one research group. Uh, there is a person who has sent three applications for three different research groups. That is not possible. You have to, to, to choose just one, okay? Just an application. Of course, now if there is a mistake, you can do it again. But you can apply only for one research group. So another question: When I start the program? And if the program if you if you mean the program when uh, you are going to the fellow when you are going to start the fellowship, uh, we expect uh, to start in March, more or less. It depends of the all the yes all the papers and. And things that we have to to sign and to get in order to come to Pamplona and to Navarre, but we expect uh, in March 2023, more or less. Yeah, as I told you, in the final results will be published at the end of December, at the end of this year, and after that, a period of three months is given just to arrange all your administrative questions and come to Navarra and start, sign your contract and start your fellowships. It's not a, a limit period. Officially, yeah, there is a possibility if some uh, difficulties are arise that this three months period can be extended. Uh, good morning. My question is that I already completed a master one degree last year. Now I am a master two student. I have the notes and transcripts of the first semester, but currently, currently doing my research internship that will end in July 3. Can I apply for the first call or should I wait for the second call? Uh, unfortunately, you have to wait until the second one, okay? Because 
uh, the master degree must be finished by the deadline of the first call. This is at the 8th of June. So if you finish in July, you will be able to apply for the second one that I, I have said before. Uh, we will launch um, at the beginning of 2023, in January probably. How the candidate will be evaluated since the fields of the research are different? Uh, well, the, the evaluation process is uh, a kind it's a very particular one. For the first phase, well, the program, the WIT program has a, a panel of evaluation. It's a format by 12 experts from the different area of the program. There are three experts for each one of the four areas. These experts will make the evaluation of the first phase. And as I told you, 10, the 10 best proposal will be selected to accept to the second phase. In the second phase, the evaluation will, will be made by two evaluators from this panel, and additionally, by two experts pointed for one of the Spanish uh, regional agencies of research evaluation. This is the, in this case, the AGAO, the Catalonia Agency. So, in the second phase, each proposal will be evaluated by four experts. And uh, there is a, a strategic way to select the eight best uh, proposals. As you can read it in the official document of the, and the head of public as well, with more, with more detail in the official document of the call, uh, the four first uh, fellowships will be given to the proposals with a better with the best uh, scoring in each of the four areas. And after that, four fellowships are selected. The next four uh, will be selected from the proposal with the best score of any of the four fields, but with a uh, maximum fellowships per area of three. So it would be given uh, three fellowships in the health area, three fellowships in the mechatronic area, and one fellowship in the energy and the artificial. At least one in each one of the four areas, and a maximum of three in, the, in each area. So, uh, hello, my name is Rosana. I would like to make a couple of questions. I would like to more than one group of research uh, we have said before now and another question i know english but i don't have any certificate i could prove it at the time of the interview uh, no can i apply for a scholarship if you don't have if you can't accreditate uh, your english level uh, you, you cannot apply for a scholarship sorry and i think that is is the last question, and we are running out of time, more or less. So we want to thank you again for joining us today in this session. Of course, if you, in meantime, if you have more questions, you can always contact by email, and we will answer all of them, of course. Um, and that's. That's all. Thank you very much and good luck. Bye.